Hey guys, Ryu here and welcome to part 3 of this complete beginner guide to hard surface modeling in Blender. In part 1 we discussed, you know, the main add-ons that you're gonna be needing, free add-ons. And we talked a bit about uh, basics of Blender and some interface stuff, etc. And then we started modeling. In part 2 we modeled all these, all these uh, mid-level and kind of like a smaller details like these bolts here etc and in this video we're going to wrap it up okay so first of all we're going to do stuff that we haven't finished in the last video and also things that kind of came to my mind after uh you know i stopped recording and kind of looked around this model and thought hmm maybe i could do that first things first we need to stay consistent with the design so these bolts should also appear here so what we're going to do is we're going to simply borrow the cutters. So shift two to uh, grab the cutters and let me just uh, enable the user interface. I mean, not the interface, the, um, what do you call this? The grid and all the, what's it called again? Overlays, that's the one. I always call it overlays, I don't know why. Um, anyway, so uh, we're going to grab these, right? Uh, these two and uh, shift D them down here and uh, kind of plug them in here and select this one and we're going to control plus select this bit uh, and move this boolean on top let's collapse it and boom right so now this is a little bit too low so gz and move it up and bob uncle shift two and be peachy see now it just makes a bit more sense and you know looks a bit more believable on the side here it looks a bit boring but i want to keep this clean look however what we can do is create you know either some kind of vents or one panel and one vent and maybe we can do it uh, in a non-symmetrical fashion where where we're going to create a larger panel and a small vent i think it's going to look pretty cool um, eventually when you you know work um i mean i work in blender every day for hours okay uh, 12 hours you know 14 doesn't matter just always doing something regarding 3d so eventually it just becomes a second nature to you but um, and you are able to see things that not you're able to see kind of designs that um, you know they're not there yet but you can sort of visualize the bit that would fit in the area and other times you just simply need to model something to 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 realize well do i really want that or not so g uh g y here and uh, what i'm gonna do right is i'm gonna move this here to the side and i'm gonna create a panel here maybe a little bit um wider so let's go to face mode select that go to solid view and gx and hold shift and move it here Right. Control A and apply scale. And I think I'm going to chamfer the top. So go to add edge mode and select this and shift select this one. Control B and chamfer this a little bit like that. Maybe not as much. So Control Z and maybe that will do something like that. And then, okay, I'm going to uh, move this. But if I'm going to shift the X and then scale it on X axis, you'll see that my bevel is going to get buggered. So we're going to do it a bit differently, all right? So we're going to copy this, shift D and X here, right? But instead of scaling this in object mode, we're going to scale it in edit mode, all right? So let's go to um, vertex. And then with machine tools, we're going to enable something called occlude. It's the same same one as in here called X-ray mode. All right. So if you enable this, you can actually see through mesh in edit mode. So let's go again to front view and go to vertex mode. Then press uh, here to deselect everything. Press B to select these vertices. And even if you select these in, op in orthographic mode, you can see that it goes through the mesh. If you don't have this enabled, all right. And you're gonna try to select uh, this in orthographic mode you will select only objects i mean uh, vertices that are visible to you which means the front ones so these would not be selected so again you know uh, just simply turn the occlude mode and you can select it through the mesh right and then with with this selected okay we're gonna go back here to the front view and gx and move it here holding shift so now you see that we're maintaining this um, kind of a 
chamfer size and now we have equal uh, you know equal size uh, boxes we can actually combine them so press ctrl j to combine it into one mesh so now this is going to be um, one mesh and select this one and we can chisel it but before we do that let's shade it smooth and let's add auto smooth and also what we need to do is remove here uh, auto smooth and shade smooth there we go shift select this one and control forward slash because what we want is panels right so select this main shape now uh, this one and go here collapse the modifiers and move the boolean above uh, the bevel here the same here collapse the modifiers and move the boolean above the bevel right and then grab this one m cutters now we got two palace cut on each side which i think looks cool and this one here we can separate it now so we can go to vertex mode right so we can now apply this right so let's apply all these uh, all these booleans so again clean the data go to modifier stack and let's apply these uh, booleans right and in this one we're going to apply this boolean okay which is basically um, this cutout right so I'll select this one go to vert mode select the vert we can turn off this pass through Control L to select everything um, on this object and then press P and selection right go back here and now we can go to object mode and go to front orthographic so now these two objects have origin point in the middle because they they were cut out from this main shape right now we can move origin point to each of them separately but we can do it together as well so you can select both of them with shift okay then shift s and move to geo and origin point will move to each of these separately right so you can select multiple objects and move origin point to them you can't do it with cursor because cursor is on the one so if you move cursor to these two it's going to move somewhere in between here uh, because this is going to be the median kind of middle of this selection right make sense cool so let's grab this one shift a and um, shift s and let's move cursor to select it shift a and grab a cube and scale it so it's going to be in the middle front view orthographic and um, let's just scale it on X and then on Z and then GZ move it up here and now I think maybe on a bottom because I want to create like a grill and I don't want to go all the way up I want to go like maybe somewhere up to here I think it's gonna look cool so let's just apply scale shade smooth and auto smooth and then let's um, let's go here and apply array and we're going to clean it on X axis and move it up with shift here and then create maybe that many iterations and then click here in control minus. So control minus, select this one and move it above mirror, actually above the bevel, there we go. And now we got a bit of a problem and this is going to be caused by the bevel see <clears throat> bevel is so large in here that simply overshoots uh, these uh, these cuts in addition to this uh, probably blender creates some crazy connections you can see the pool on this side i bet you there is a like massive you know amount of lines edges connecting each of these to one of these corner points which is insane so let's go to edge mode let's grab um front view orthographic so in edit mode i want you to grab a knife and cut it through press c and enter and this should fix the problem of uh, these i don't want it to go so deep so what we're going to do is we're going to go to main view and we're going to shift to and we're going to grab this and gx and uh, sorry gy and move it out a bit what you can do to be able to see through the mesh in solid view press alt z this is again extreme mode in solid mode see this one it goes too deep so simply gy and move it out here so it cuts only through one piece of this mesh alt z to fix it now you see 
it's almost fixed right almost fixed and the problem here is that the bevel is still too big you're seeing overshooting here so we need to grab this panel right um this long panel and we need to change the bevel size right so just start dial it down or simply put a number in here like maybe 0 0.2 or something right not 52 0 0.2 there we go something like this and grab this one and cutters shift two and you're done and it looks really nice you see it doesn't go all the way it looks believable it's really cool now we need to copy this these panels across right so what we need to do is add a mirror okay so mirror and move this mirror above the way the normals and now there is a mirror hang on a second now there is a mirror here but from some reason it doesn't work and it doesn't work before because we move the origin point to the object. Now you can see that it's got mirrored across itself. The mirror point by the default is the origin point. So what we need to do is instead of doing that, turn off this Y axis for bisect, select this thing and copy it across the main object and same here. Select that, collapse the modifier stack, go to mirror, turn this off, click on that and mirror across and boom, you're done. You're back in business, all right? So let's save this, right? So everything is about details, guys, okay? What I want to do is I create more details in here, okay? So uh, shift S and move uh, to select it, the cursor, shift A, and that's another cube. And scale this and uh, scale it like that, move it in here and scale it on Z and make it really, really small. Also, I want to copy the bevel um, size. So it's 0 0.2 same here bevel and we're gonna change it to 0 0.2 okay because this is gonna cause us problems so what i want to do is want to create kind of like notches in here okay like small ones you know so you can put a finger or some tool and kind of pull it pull this panel off this device so right click shade smooth and uh auto smooth and i'm going to move this one here on x axis and control minus okay then I'm going to go to this panel and move this boolean on top of uh, on top of here, the bevel, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a mirror to this one, okay? So go here and add a mirror. And you see we had a problem. So add all these three and then uh, bisect it across this shape, right? And then if we wanted to copy this across z axis okay it's gonna get copied across the origin point which is here so if i do that it's gonna do this right which is not a bad thing but that's not what i want so we either can move origin point or simply go to edit mode and shift dz and you know move it down and move it down somewhere here okay it's gonna look a bit better so colors you see it looks really neat look at this distribution of details you know you got this um, asymmetry in here with this um, um, with this panel you got this panel going on here and in fact what we could do uh, let's just go with shift 2 and grab this one okay and shift D and X and move it in here right and change the mirror on this duplicated one okay to a different uh, to a different object which is this one and uh, then we're going to make it a bit more wide and let's see if it's gonna work select this one and control minus and this is a bit too wide so let's simply um, select this cutter and sx and scale it or we could move it so gx and simply move it out out here like this right and then what we need to do is move this boolean on top here right so you see we borrow the car is the same size looks identical and it's you know you only need to do is just change the object across which you mirror all right so just watch this again if it's confusing it's it's you know you we mirror the color to the side and simply switch them at uh, the mirror point to this panel instead of this panel right and it's gonna get mirrored here automatically so no problem so the sides are really nicely done now what we could do here is create a panel on top of it so let's go to edit mode and let's grab uh, Control r here this will not work because 
uh, you see this is an n gun so this is an n gun not a square but we can fix i mean not a quad we can fix this by um simply uh, dropping a loop here like this okay and when you drop this loop we can actually um, change this face snap to vertex snap okay and um, uh, turn up the rotation and then if you're gonna go uh, with ctrl r and you can actually choose a vert with control to which you want to snap so if i hold control it's going to snap to this vert it's going to be perfectly aligned with it then we can combine this with j so select this shift select this and press j to combine it and then press k with a knife and we're going to run a knife here like this so from here uh, press c and run this way and enter and we're going to remove this uh, this edge so pre simply press f and now we got this uh, interesting uh, bit here. This is what I'm interested in. Okay, so we got this bit, right? So we can select everything here. So select this, shift select this, control click here, shift click here, and control click here. One more time. Click, shift click, control click, shift click, control click. So control click gonna select a loop, yeah? We're going to shift D this, right? Press P, selection, and then we're gonna grab this and um, we're gonna collapse all the modifiers, right? I don't think these booleans do anything for us. So let's try, they don't, so we can remove them. We'll keep these ones, okay? And then we're gonna add another modifier called solidify. Uh, so solidify, we need to move it above and let me see, the bevel is a bit too big so we can drop it to 0 0.2 as well. And I think it's going to be peachy. And now solidification can go either way. You can go up or down. We want to go up here, okay? And make sure you got this even thickness turned on. Uh, sometimes when you solidify, especially on curves, it happens so that the thickness of the plating is going to be different on, you know, either side. So, okay, so let's apply solidification. We're happy with that. And let's go here and grab this line. So just um, go to edge mode and alt click on the line. It's gonna select the whole thing. Control B and you know move it like this. And we're going to. So now we're going to press uh, Control R and drop a loop here. And then we're going to press Control R and drop a loop here. Right. And we're gonna grab this bit. And we're going to press E, right mouse button to cancel, Alt S, and move your mouse down just to insert it a little bit, okay, like that. We're gonna have an interesting, you know, kind of like a accent over there. And we can actually mirror this to the other side. So add modifier, mirror. So we need to mirror this now the other way around. So not from left to right, but from right to left. So we're gonna click on axis, and then we're gonna bisect it. And it's gonna mirror this across this side and to the other side because we have two mirrors, right? Okay. Cool, and I think that will do, guys. Uh, that's you know that's gonna be the top of this, of this thing, and I think we're good to go. We could create some pounds here on the top as well, but I'm not gonna be bothering with this. What we could do is actually create a roof here, a sort of like a pound here on the top. So Shift D, and P to its own selection, and then. So now you don't want to apply the boolean because the boolean is these two things on top, right? So you wanna remove the boolean, okay? And uh, we're going to we're going to grab these cutters, but later. So let's first go to solidify, and uh, let's solidify this and move it up. Okay, and we're gonna solidify it up uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit more than the other one. So you know until they meet, and then we need to definitely drop the bevel to zero point two, like that. Let's apply the solidification. Okay, so we got that. And now what we can do is, you know, cut these in. Okay, so we can press Shift 2 and grab these, right? And select that and Control minus. And then select here and move these cutters above bevel. And you're going to have cutouts in that mesh uh, here. And they're going to be perfectly encompassing, you know, the shape, right? So it looks pretty cool. Awesome. Shift 2. So we got the top 
kind of like a piling on top of this and we got the sides now what we could do the last thing right is we could add some you know some maybe control lights or something and we could also add some i don't know maybe keypad or, or some stuff so keypad is really easy guys shift s and move um to select it the cursor now the um, origin point again is somewhere down there so shift s and move origin point to geometry shift s move cursor to select it and then shift a and add a cube and scale it down and now we're going to be making keys right so or something so g x move it out here like a keypad so first we need to create a keypad right so let's make it longer and let's miss don't make it in the middle don't put it in the middle because i mean it's going to be boring let's misalign it somewhere here it's going to be fun all right it can be even longer or you could split it into two you know uh sort of a keypad let's say right it's kind of following the design here but in vertical fashion so so shift d z and move it up right and simply scale it on z like this and create something like this here right and this is a little bit too much sticking out so g x and move it in right and g s x and scale it and do something like this and apply the scale and then you know um let's combine them so control j and then auto smooth and uh, shade smooth and then control plus because you want to combine it right so let's select this one go to edge mode press k for knife and run a knife here with a c click and you're done and then let's move this modifier uh, up here okay so boom right now it's mirrored but we don't want that so what you want to do is you want to move this right um move this modifier above the bevel right but below the mirror so everything gonna get mirrored except this right so let's apply all of them right modifier as disabled let me see that um, what modifier is this oh, this doesn't do anything for us so we can turn it off and then let's apply this and then um, we can we cannot really apply the boolean before we apply the mirror because if I do that it's gonna get applied you see so we need to apply the mirror first and then the boolean otherwise it's not gonna work we're going to lower the bevel a little bit okay because it's insane we're going to make it 0 0.2 all right it's a bit more civil and we're going to go to edit mode so we're going to select this edge and this edge this one and this okay this one and this one and these two right and control b a little bit to create this kind of a situation all right so with this done uh, let's select this cutter here and move it to cutters okay and then we need to create some keys right so um like you know so you can press them and i don't know open or open the device and just you know do some adjustments and whatnot so let's create just simple keys and you know somewhere here now we can uh, apply scale and auto smooth and shade smooth then go to edge mode alt control click on these control b and you can actually round them up so we could create uh five you know five of these round bevels so five um five edges or four segments and um we could also bevel this control b and then scroll down and create like a chamfer you know like this right now when we're going to combine this this bevel is going to be way too big so we will not combine this okay but we're going to array this so let's array this um and array this on y axis first right here and then we need another array okay so we need another array and we need to array this on, on the uh, z-axis like this and this should do right and i'm gonna bevel this but i'm not going to combine them together okay i'm gonna leave them alone so i'm going to the bevel right 
and the bevel gonna have to be smaller so you know just much smaller than this let's turn off this clamping because it drives me crazy put something small here like 0 0.001 okay and we're gonna add some weighted normals at the end boom and you got the keypads and this one could be some kind of a screen here so what we could do let's go to face mode select this one shift d right press p selection and then collapse this bevel and weighted normals add some solidification to it right? and move this one at top right and the uh, solidified outside right, here scale it just a little bit in like that and change the bevel to something small like one and you're gonna have this screen on top but we need to uh it's got scaled on this origin point so you see get scaled on the origin point which is not what we want so let's actually go back shift s and to geometry then scale it on the origin point and we're going to move it here on G Y. Right? Go to edit mode, vertex, occlude, B. Select these, uh, G Y, and move it in here. So I got this screen kind of a thing going on. It looks pretty cool, right? And I think that's it, guys. I mean, we could, um, for example, run another cut in here if you wanted to. That's really easy. Let's go to edge mode and control R and add a loop here. In fact, let's add it in the middle, it's gonna be easier. And then let's grab it to local, go to side view, like this, and then press K and press C and run it all the way down here, and then press Z, click and enter. And this will cut through, okay, the whole mesh, like everywhere. So we don't really need this loop here, to be honest. So select it with Alt and X, and dissolve edges, because we don't need it. We don't need this one either, to be honest. But we need this one, so select this one, G, X, and move it in. Then um, Control B to split it, and then E, cancel with the right mouse button, Alt S, and move your mouse in. Okay. And this is, this is going to create this kind of indentation around it, which I think is going to look pretty cool. So you can go either in or out, uh, you know, up to you, basically. Maybe this one is a little bit too narrow. Maybe you can make it a bit more thick. So click here in face mode, out click. So it's going to select the whole thing around. And then GX and move it in here. Let's see how this will look. Maybe it's going to look better. Hmm. Or well, we could run a panel here too. Go to face mode, out click this, shift D, then P selection, right? Select that. It's the same thing, so I'm going a bit faster now. Let's apply this boolean here, okay? Because not duplicate. Um apply this. Bevel mirror, okay. Um we can apply the mirror. And then we need solidify. Okay. And the solidify needs to go outside like this, right? And needs to be above the bevel. And then we got this kind of a panel in the middle here. I think it looks pretty cool. And then you can adjust it whether you want it to go outside or not. You know, it could go a little bit outside here. Like this, maybe. And I think it looks pretty cool. And in addition to that, you could create some additional cuts in here. So, good to grab another cube and go to you know front view and scale it and scale it on x and scale it on z and scale it some more and g move it in here maybe make it a bit bigger and gx gy sorry move it here and let's shade smooth auto smooth shift select this and control minus did it work it did yeah okay and then where is the midpoint here? Let me just go here. Midpoint is here, so shift S and move to geometry. Also, we need to remove this. Oh, this is boolean. That's interesting. Because it's a main structure, P's, D's got applied. So let's select the vert here, control L, 
select the vert here as well, control L and then simply X delete vertices and then shift S into geometry, which is going to bring it in here. That's what we want. Now let's bring Boolean up to the top, right? Now let's go back and let's grab this cutter, right? And then the mirror. And we're going to mirror this on Z axis across this object. Boom, right? Across here. Now we got some weird cuts here. I mean, weird uh, artifacts here. The reason is because the bevel on this one is too big. Okay, it's overshooting. So we're going to simply change it to something like 0 0.03. And there you go. And sort it. And it's going to mirror on the other side or not? Nope. So we need to add mirror here as well. So let's collapse these stacks. Add a mirror. Move it here above the... Uh, well, you can put it below the bevel. It's fine. And let's mirror this on itself. Um, actually, across this main object. Uh, or even on its own um, axis because it's in the middle. So that's fine. Across Y. So bring this one in cutters. And that's it. So there you go, guys. It's a full design. I think we complete here. You can still keep adding elements, but I think at this point, you know, we're kind of done, right? Let's select these faces. It's the last thing I'm going to do. And let's we'll just inset them a little bit, okay? And just extrude them a little bit to create a bit more of a thickness here, the back, uh, just for shits and giggles, okay? So there's a bit more structure here in the back. And there you go, guys. That's our finished, you know, kind of a device or whatnot. Let's save it now. All right, guys. Well, that's it. I think in the next video, we're going to be adding some lighting mats and rendering this. Maybe actually adding some floor as well. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. But you see, we had so much fun detailing this thing. It took us like 40 minutes or close to it. And, uh, you know, but that's, detailing is really important. You really need to understand how to do it and how to create a really pleasing but interesting design. So it looks intricate, but it doesn't look, you know, boring or silly and looks believable because that's you know the most important thing that's how you're gonna get picked up as an artist through your portfolio because clients will look at your portfolio will contact you say hey we like what we're seeing we would like to hire you okay and that's usually how it happens through the portfolio so it's important to pay attention to details and kind of you know know what you're doing and and how you want to bring that model to conclusion so anyway guys that's it for this one thanks for watching and as usual there's a link to a pdf book a free ebook that we created for you as Blender Bros. If you get that book through our website, which like I said, it's free, you're gonna get some additional free, really cool stuff with it uh, in a due course through emails. So I highly recommend you get that. There's a lot of interesting stuff there to read about and learn. And also it's a very good reference place to, if you know, if you forget something or in a refresher memory. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in part four.